Hello, and welcome to the 25th century, the year 2476 to be exact. Now, this is not your typical pristine, beautiful future. This is a dark future, as stated in the open of every episode of Arc 2 by Lou Scheimer, the producer. For millions of years, Earth was fertile and rich. Then pollution and waste began to take their toll. Civilization fell into ruin. This is the world of the 25th century. Only a handful of scientists remain, men who have vowed to rebuild what has been destroyed. This is their achievement. Part 2. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Debuting in 1976, hence the future fictitious date of 2076, on the CBS television network, Part 2 was a smash, especially with kids like me who love the adventure, the characters, and all the cool stuff. But what we didn't realize is it was kind of a morality play with some life's lessons. Those lessons were being taught not as a speech, but hidden as a captain's log from Terry Lester, Captain Jonah himself, at the end of every episode. What the? What's going on? Get out of the way! I'll tell you what. This is exactly why they didn't let Jonathan Harris drive the chariot on Lost in Space. century, if you needed to get around, this was the slickest vehicle in town. As a matter of fact, this is going to be a great show, folks. We're going to give you a tour of this amazing vehicle. We're going to show you the props, the sets, the costumes, the guest stars, the cast. This should be pretty exciting. But let's do it right. Let's consult the computer and take this uh, tour into the future. Augustus, activate tour mode. This show was fantastic. It had a great cast, it had props, costumes, these wonderful sets, amazing stuff for Saturday morning. As far as who designed or built all this stuff, there's a vague credit for a man named Michael Bow, and then of course art director Bob Klein. What a great job. It completely transported all of us kids on Saturday into the 25th century. Now, let me show you a couple other things. All right, now keep in mind the Ark itself and the smaller EVA vehicle known as the Roamer were the two coolest vehicles on television. Now, the Ark itself is 44 feet long, built by the Brubaker Group, makers of the kit car known as the Brubaker Box. Now, here presented for the first time ever are the actual patent details of both vehicles. Now, according to producer Lou Scheimer in the Ark 2 documentary, the Ark was constructed on the chassis of a large dump truck. Now, the Roamer was, of course, a redesign of the Brubaker box already in production. Now, both vehicles were supposed to be fueled by hydrogen since no gas stations were to exist in the future. The Ark was very tough to steer since the actual driving position was in the lower nose section. Another interesting thing about this prop is that when the crew were to drive this thing to the filming sites, the nose area would be placed on the back with full working lights and turn signals you would not have wanted the crew of Arc 2 going up against the California Highway Patrol. I mean, let's face it, that would be a crossover into the Chips TV show. Now, the Arc was an elegant ship with a spacious interior, not quite matching the exterior prop and link. But hey, let's face it, Doctor Who changed all that with the TARDIS interior having different dimensions. As I said, the Arc is 44 feet long, and the interior is divided into three sections. The cockpit, the main cabin, and the garage for the Roamer vehicle. Now it has four chairs that make all the computer systems easily accessible, the elevator for the crow's nest, a place for the jetpack, and a replicator in the rear of the ship. 
The computers are integrated into the walls on both sides of the vehicle. They are subdivided into science, medical, and communication. There are two fold-down beds and an atmospheric protection screen over the main entrance. Now the costumes were cool too. They were designed as futuristic, all-weather, all-terrain outfits protecting the crew in any sort of environment. But the coolest thing, of course, were the belt and cuff control panels. Now the cuffs, those were designed more for communication and tracking, and the belt controls were actually remotes for all the vehicles. You heard me right, a replicator. We all thought it was invented in the 24th century. Ah, but it was invented in the 25th century by the people that created Arc 2. And it's a fairly simple device to use. As a matter of fact, Adam the chimpanzee uses it all the time. Of course, he's intelligent, he speaks, he drives the vehicles. But maybe in this case, we should say it's simple enough for a human to use. What do we have today? Fresh baked bread, cheese, fruit. That's fine. Okay, folks, earlier I showed you the never-before-seen blueprints from the actual patented material. Well, now I'm going to show you something else never-before-seen in the series. We're going to check out the garage that houses the rover. And you'll notice all these storage cabinets. Now, in here are all the materials not only to repair the Ark and the, the rover, but also a lot of the other uh, accessories like the jetpack and the, uh, the light weapon and all the other things that need to be repaired. This is where Samuel keeps all the spare parts. And it's sort of a workshop, too. Now, of course, Backlot Spaceport is really about hardware and stuff. It's always been my favorite part of these TV shows and movies. But this show in particular, I really liked this cast. These are good folks, good actors. I really enjoyed them. So let me introduce them to you, or I'll tell you what, let's let Captain Jonah, Terry Lester, take care of that for us. Arc 2 Log, entry number one. I, Jonah, Ruth, Samuel, and Adam are fully aware of the dangers we face as we venture into unknown, maybe even hostile areas. But we're determined to bring the promise of a new civilization to our people and our planet. I love those folks. But now, let's get back to the heart of the matter, the stuff. Arc 2 is loaded with some amazing, sophisticated hardware. Let's take a look at a couple of those things right now. Here we are. The first prop to talk about, and probably the coolest thing, because, let's face it, it's real. This is the Arc 2 Jet Jumper. Now, this was based on the original Bell Jetpack. Now, most keen fans will not only recognize this from Lost in Space, but dating back all the way to the James Bond film, Thunderball. This was an actual working jetpack, so when you saw the stuntman in the air flying, he was actually flying. So how does it work? Well, let's see if uh, Terry Lester can demonstrate it for us. Spotted the camp. Now, true, Arc 2 is designed as a peaceful vehicle to help mankind, but let's face it, it's well armed. Some weapons are for offensive measures, and some are for defensive. My absolute favorite is the deflector shield. You gotta have that whenever you're attacked by scavengers. Stand by to secure the arc. Activate vertical and lateral force field. Back secured. Now, of course, there's the main forward laser. Oh. Note to self, in the future, Adam does not fire the main forward laser. There's also the handheld laser. Of course, there's the light weapon. This is non-lethal, and it renders your enemies blind until you can get away. And of course, a tractor man. 
being performed here by none other than Jonathan Harris. Now, of course, Arc 2 is also known for guest stars. Check this out. Out of all of the TV guest stars, and there were many, the most famous guest star of all was, that's right, Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet. I must say that I have to shut you down. You must not, Samuel. Alfred, please don't argue with me. It's hard enough as it is. Hey, speaking of Robbie, Adios, amigo. what's he doing here? Wait a second. Look out, Samuel. Great. It looks like security officer John Tanner has reprogrammed Robbie to kill me. Well, there's only one thing to do. That's to get out of here. Folks, I hope you enjoyed your tour of Arc 2. Unfortunately, I've got to get out of here. I have a crazy robot on my tail trying to kill me. So until next time, we'll see you again on an all-new episode of Backlot Spaceport.